Hi everyone, welcome to Mathco's first LinkedIn Live for 2024. Um, happy New Year. Uh, it's still January, so I guess it's okay to say Happy New Year. Um, so today we're joined by Ashwin Kumar, who's a partner at Mathco. He leads the solutioning and uh, growth team here at Mathco. So that means that he's at the forefront of a lot of client conversations, you know, at Fortune 500 clients. And so he's clued in on a lot of the, you know, uh, what's the, what are the current trends? What are the, you know, upcoming future trends that we can expect? which is why uh, we're talking to him today about uh, the trends and, uh, you know, our predictions for the year 2024 with respect to uh, the data analytics and enterprise AI space. Uh, and uh, I'm really excited for this conversation. Uh, hi, Ashwin. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, hi, Nirpama. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, happy New Year to you too. Uh, you. Excited to uh, kick things off with uh, the podcast for the year. Yeah. So um, yeah. So that uh, that's a very good point to remind the audience. Uh, those who uh, didn't get a chance to you know join the LinkedIn Live, you can also listen to it later on LinkedIn. But also, it's going to be added to Coefficient, which is our podcast series. Uh, so, is this your first uh, LinkedIn Live? Uh, in, in fact, I think this is my first uh, LinkedIn Live uh, session. So, okay. uh, and, and that being the first one for the year, super pumped about it. That's amazing. I'm actually really, uh, you know, uh, it, it, it's funny that uh, you haven't done a LinkedIn Live so far because you're one of the oldest employees here at Mathco, right? Yes. Um, so, you know, for the sake of those who have joined who might not be aware of uh, what you do here, would like to understand a little better, could you maybe uh, introduce yourself a little bit about the work? that you do and uh, you know like basically how it manifests into the whole you know what what's ha what happens here at absolutely would love to so i'm ashwin i'm one of the partners here at the firm i was also one of the first employees to join the math co journey uh, my role is to drive growth uh, for the organization uh, which means uh, we identify the set of enterprises uh, prioritize what should be the right solution to offer to them, uh, understand their challenges, the opportunities, uh, and that feeds into our GTM and the go-to strategy. And uh, we design the best possible solutions uh, to give clients the confidence that Mathco is the right partner for them. And this also gives a very good vantage point uh, for me and Mathco to understand what are all different enterprises thinking about. And these inputs are then used to frame uh, different strategies and operational decisions that we end up making. Yeah, so I think that's a that's a crucial role, right? Because in a space like data analytics and AI, which is changing, I think, by every day, uh, I think this is something that is really important, uh, which is also why this conversation is really crucial. Um, so the uh, first question I want to start off by uh, asking you, if you had to summarize, uh, you know, Mathco's outlook for uh, this year in one word, what would that be? Yeah, the one word uh, summarizations are always tricky, uh, but uh, what I would choose for this particular um, uh, situation is sense of efficiency. Uh, that would be uh, my choice uh, of, of, of the uh, response. Okay, sense of efficiency. Yes. Um, could you expand on it a little no, bit? No, absolutely. I would love to. Uh, so if you look at the last 18 to 24 months, uh, the level and the severity of disruptions that enterprises have faced uh, is truly phenomenal. Uh, the disruptions have come from multiple factors. Uh, one from technology. Uh, technologies like generative AI have changed the landscape. Uh, there have been disruptions from consumers buying patterns. Uh, there have been disruptions around uh, geopolitical geography events. Uh, so these kind of disruptions have made enterprises realize that they cannot be dependent on solutions that drive their key decisions uh, that are not controlled or that are not owned by them. Uh, so these solutions have then quickly become redundant. Uh, their shelf life becomes shorter. Uh, and so enterprises uh, who did not have these capabilities were not able to thrive uh, in this disruptive environment. Uh, and this uh, is one of the reasons why as part of our recent rebranding strategy that we did at Mathco, uh, we wanted to re-emphasize our commitment uh, to enterprises around this. Uh, and in fact, our, our tagline is own your intelligence, which uh, truly uh, synthesizes what we want to bring to enterprises and what enterprises should be focused on as well. Right. Uh, I think you tied it very well with, you know, how, uh, you know, self-sufficiency really is at the core of a lot of things we do here at Mathco. I remember for the first uh, uh, podcast episode we, have for co we had for Coefficient, um, Shine Debash, our uh, CEO, he spoke about self-sufficiency and how uh, that is really important. 
so I think that's, uh, that's a yeah. good way to start this uh, conversation. Um, I want to ask you like uh, the next thing about trends, of course, right? Um, so apart from sense efficiency, which is a much broader concept, right? If you had to pick three to four or even maybe more if you have uh, trends or predictions that you have for uh, this year in terms of how the data analytics and enterprise AI industry uh, would change or you know what uh, what our uh, customers and clients would be looking for what uh, large global enterprises would be looking at this year uh, what would that be? No, absolutely uh, uh, th there are quite a few trends that we have observed uh, there are indicators of these trends continuing uh, into the new year as well. Uh, the few of them, uh, I would, uh, the top ones I would be able to kind of like uh, share uh, in the series today. Uh, the first one is the need for enterprises to create tangible impact uh, on the investments that they make. Uh, this is very important in a disruptive environment where the competition is very high. Uh, so the need for enterprises to realize the impact as quick as possible, as sure as possible, is going to be very important. And that would drive different decisions around uh, investment prioritizations, uh, etc. Uh, the second uh, trend is around incorporating technology and innovation uh, into the way enterprises operate. Uh, one example, obviously, in the last year and what would continue into several years forward uh, is around generative AI. Uh, it's not just about developing a proof of concept or an experiment in one corner of the organization that becomes a theoretical or innovative exercise, but how can these technologies by can be integrated uh, into the core action plan decision-making process as well. So that's going to be very important. The third aspect is going to be around personalization. As I mentioned, customers, the way they are purchasing, the way they are making their decisions uh, has completely transformed. And enterprises today have more insights about customers' behavior, about the data that is being captured. And it's very important to translate that data into a true personalized experience for customers. So a lot of initiatives won't be around this particular trend. Uh, and the last one, as I mentioned, uh, enterprises are going to make a lot of investments uh, to build their internal capabilities. Uh, the conventional models of uh, a license-based uh, setup uh, to outsource uh, their capabilities or be dependent uh, on other partners for their core analytical means. Uh, is something that's going to be disrupted further in the coming year. Okay, there's a, there's a lot there to sort of, you know, pull out and discuss separately. Uh, but I want to, you know, talk about uh, generative AI, which is something that you mentioned, which is something that we've also been talking about a lot. Um, and, uh, you know, we've sort of uh, gone big on that. Uh, we are working, we have a generative AI offering that we, uh, that we you know, offer to a lot of our clients. Um, we also did an episode on this, uh, on, uh, on coefficient. So if you could uh, tell us a little bit about it, in, ge in the last year, right, in 2023, Generative AI, there was a lot of hype around it. And, uh, you know, uh, we were towards the end of the year talking about, so like, how do we actually, you know, implement this? How do uh, businesses start making use of this and in what ways? So I want to understand uh, what do you think would be the cutting edge uh, generative AI trends that you would see in this year? No, absolutely. I think uh, the first and foremost trend when it comes to generative AI uh, is uh, that there are going to be multiple versions, multiple enhancements uh, of the core underlying LLMs, the large language models, uh, which is going to be very important for enterprises to adopt into. For example, uh, GPT uh, is going to release their GPT-5 is around the corner. Uh, and so it, it's being trained on trillions of parameters and, and the next version would be bigger. Uh, so adopting these newer uh, models is going to be very crucial and they would offer new features, intelligent automations, uh, being able to even create automated images or videos so how can enterprises and macro uh, can take advantage is going to be very crucial. Uh, the second trend, if you look at the potential of generative AI today, uh, it could be split into two categories. One categories are use cases, uh, problems that may not have been solved at all without generative AI. Uh, for example, capabilities around uh, reading through large hundreds of 
thousands of documents and being able to infer the context is something that could be possible only through generative AI. Uh, the older technologies around NLPs uh, may not be sufficient to solve that problem. So there's going to be an increased focus on use cases that can be solved only through generative AI. Okay. And one uh, important point is going to be on the second category of uh, the potential, uh, which is all the conventional solutions and decisions that are being made in enterprises. Uh, and these decisions have been made for several years. For example, if you look at retailers, uh, they make decisions on forecasting their demand, managing their supply chain, all along. But now, if we are able to integrate the power of generative AI into these conventional solutions, uh, it could be making them more dynamic. Uh, it could be about presenting and automated insights for the stakeholders. Uh, it could be giving them a heat map on where they should focus on, etc. Uh, essentially, generative AI becoming a co-pilot in these conventional use cases is also an area that's going to really explode in the coming years. Uh, because that is going to truly change the way enterprises operate, the way they go about making their decisions. Right. Um, yeah, so this again like ties into a lot of the conversations that we had uh, last year uh, in our podcast. We spoke about uh, revenue growth management. We spoke about uh, retail media marketing and how Generative AI sort of, uh, you know, plays a role in all of these things. Absolutely. Um, yeah. yeah, so, um, yeah, so we've spoken about Generative AI. Um, apart from that, uh, you know, like you also mentioned a few trends, right? Like if you had to like say, this is something that we are betting big on this year. Um, of course, you know, it's Ashwin <laughs> saying that. <laughs> so like, you know, what would that be? What would your... No, absolutely. Bet? I think uh, uh, keeping these trends and the disruptions and the opportunities that are, that are in play, uh, our longer term vision and investment is always going to be able to developing multiple intelligent solutions uh, within an enterprise that could solve a variety of problems across multiple functions. Not just solving those specific problems, but can they be integrated with each other? Can they talk to each other? The outputs of one could feed into as an input to another solution, etc. Uh, so building these connected systems of applications uh, is where we are going to place the bet on. Now, to make this possible, it's not just about one particular factor. You need to bring in the generative AI here because that would make the solutions uh, more intelligent. Uh, we also need to bring in efficiency, which we do through our Nucleus platform, uh, which has also been integrated with Gen AI. So these uh, combinations uh, of uh, decisions that we make uh, to build these connected uh, system of applications is where we are going to be largely focusing on as a key investment and as a strategy for uh, not just for 2024, but uh, also beyond. Just going forward, yes. Uh, yeah, so this is, uh, you know, we just, uh, sometime back we released our, uh, our latest uh, podcast episode, which was with Sridhar Guttari and uh, our CTO. So he spoke about connected intelligence and uh, he's talking about how, uh, you know, that is something, he basically deconstructs the concept and how he, and he says that that's something that is, uh, you know, really crucial going forward. Um, so I um, just want to pick up one of the things that you mentioned, which is Nucleus. And uh, uh, if you could explain that a little bit more for, for the audience, people who have joined us today, that will be helpful. So, absolutely. I think for any good solution to be picked, uh, you need two components. Uh, you need the expertise of the industry, of the function to be plotted. And second, uh, you need the technology, uh, the algorithms, uh, the pipelines, etc. to be combined with the expertise for the solution to be truly beneficial, uh, to be truly useful and effective. Uh, now, the expertise uh, generally in the industry comes in the form of uh, SMEs and other uh, people-related concepts, which we also continue to invest on. But as a scalable model, that may not be the only strategy that works. So that's where Nucleus comes in. So Nucleus is our playground for building intelligent best-in-class applications. What Nucleus has been uh, enabled with are a series of accelerators, thousands of them, uh, that have been mapped to specific industries, functions, and the problems they solve. So these accelerators could be a piece of code 
they could be uh, KPI definitions, uh, they could be front-end templates on how the final visualizations could happen. And in the recent versions of NBS, we have enabled generative AI across all the modules, whether it is for data management, whether it is for algorithm development, uh, anomaly detections, uh, insights, summarizations, etc. So when we start building the applications, you don't have to reinvent something that has already been done. Nor do you have to depend on few individuals for the expertise. These have been encoded into Nucleus and its core tenets. Uh, and this offering is what we use to build solutions faster and also without compromising quality as we pursue uh, efficiency and uh, the best-in-class performance. Yeah, so like efficiency and sustainability coming together. When Absolutely, you, when you yeah, and that, about... that, that's really the, the goal for bringing that combination with our in, into life. Yeah, uh, yeah. so uh, I want to sort of wrap the conversation up with, uh, with one final question. What advice would you have for, uh, you know, uh, freshers or you know early career professionals who are joining this space so absolutely i think uh, there has never been a more exciting time to join this industry uh, when several of us started uh, in this space the focus uh, was always on becoming an expert in a particular technology or in a set of technologies uh, that is not going to be the way forward uh, as we have been talking about uh, so anybody, a fresher who's coming into the industry uh, should obviously learn certain technologies, but they should also understand how to embrace newer technologies. What really happens when a new technology comes in and how can they learn the art of going through that change and becoming very adept and comfortable with it. Uh, and that would be the one advice I would offer to anybody who's coming into the industry for them to be successful and handle the disruptions with. Thanks a lot, Ashwin. This was, I think, a great conversation. There was a lot to lot to learn. Um, I hope that the viewers also, uh, you know, found it very useful. Um, yeah. So let's wrap this up today. Uh, I'll end this conversation with a happy new year, I guess. Yes. Uh, hope you all have a really good year. And uh, you know, uh, if you are interested in getting in touch with Mathco, we will leave uh, uh, all the details of how to get in touch in in the description and in the comments. Thanks. Thank you, Zerpamo. Thank you for uh, having me today. Thank you. Thank you.